Today we'll be talking about over the air distribution for iOS. So I'm thrilled to be here and I promise I'll make a very in, uh, interesting session as I can. So I'll just give you a little bit of my background of myself. Uh, I'm a PhD student studying at QUT in Brisbane, Queensland and also part of the Mobile Innovation Lab and currently have students working on Android and Windows Mobile. And, but it's pretty cool, well, but we're mainly focusing on iOS. And feel free to visit outside on the, on the slide. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact me via Twitter. If you have questions during the presentation, I'll be taking questions after because I might not have enough time to, to go through all my slides. And the reason I'm giving this talk today is because I've been teaching iOS development for in the past two years and in QT and been working with stu 40 students and normally there are more than 30 projects that I have to deal with at the same time. So I've realized that uh, distribution is more painful than development. So today I would like to share some of my knowledge to you to help improve the distribution process. So if you haven't, you have if you haven't done iOS distribution, that's fine, because this will definitely help you. So let's move on to today's topic. Today I'll briefly talk about what iOS distribution is and what the process they are, and we'll be exploring different ways at distribution each, at each, each stage, not just test flight, but also other things that you can do. And along the process, I'll give you tips and tricks. And at the end, I'll be demonstrating how to distribute distribute your app onto a fresh iPad devices in just a few minutes. So I might need someone here with an iPad 2. Is anyone here with an iPad 2 that would like to let me use it? Yeah, all good. Okay. So today's about iOS distribution. So what is iOS distribution? It's the ability, the ability for developers to send and share your iOS app for other people to, for better testing before the app is published to the App Store. It's very simple. And there are three types of people who's involved in this process. First is the developers. Just like you and me, we code, we design. And the second one is your beta testers. And that these are the people who help you to build your top quality apps. And the third type of people is the most important part. It's your boss, a client of yours, and who's hiring you to develop apps for them. And when they want to see an app on their phone, they want it appear automatically on their phone. Because most of them does not have computer backgrounds. Therefore, it's hard to deploy apps to them. So as the developers, we are in charge of everything. We need to manage our beta testers. And sometimes we'll have different groups of beta testers. For example, people with iPhones or people with iPads. And we also need to please our boss. And sometimes we need to please multiple bosses or boss's boss. So we really, need, we, we really need to have a good system to manage all of this. So let's take a look at the existing distribution process from the start. So first is to find the UDID of the device. Second is to create provisioning files with it, associated with the UDID. Third, once the provisioning file is created, we need to generate, generate, generate your application file. And fourth, you, gotta, you need to grab the files and send it, zip it and send it to others. And five is to provide them with a list of instructions to install on their device. So these are the five main stages of distribution process. If you have went through all these five, you, can, you will know this is the most painful steps ever. 
And it's frustrating for both me and also the users as well. So my job here today is to ease the pain and to make this distribu distribution process as easy as fast as I, I can. So let's start from the beginning. The first is finding the UDID for your iOS devices. If you don't know what UDID is, it's a unique device identification. And it's a 40 character string. And there are two scenarios in this process. One is you have the ex physical access to the device. So your job becomes much easier if you have the physical access to the device. Because you have the device, then you have the tools you need, and you know what to do with it. And you can get it really fast. And the easiest and the fastest way I found is using Xcode's organizer. Just plug it into your MacBook, copy the code, and unplug it. It's really fast. So that's the first scenario. And the other one is you don't have access to the physical device. And if you don't, that becomes a problem because the person may or may not know how to get their UDID from their phone. And the person is most likely to be a boss. And the typical instruction is tell them to connect the phone to your iTunes, navigate the f to the iPhone session under the summary tab, click on the serial number label, then your UDID will appear. Then you tell them to press Command C or Control C on Windows, paste in the email and send it to me. And then sometimes they don't follow your instructions. They send me a picture instead. This could be really annoying because I had to manually type the entire 40 character strings. If I mistype the characters, I will be wasting a uh, device space in my developer account, as you all know. So this is very, the most common scenarios for getting UDIDs. But what happens if I don't have a computer? I'm traveling overseas, my boss said. And there's no way you can find your UDID without connecting to a computer. Tip number one, there's an app for that. Not many people know there's an actual app for getting the UDID on their phone. So if you search UDID on the App Store, you'll see there's, there are tons of them. And I picked the one that is most suitable. It's called UDID Tool. It's a very simple app. It does the job right. You open the app, and there's two buttons. You can just click send by email, and that's it. Done. It's sent to me. And there's a, another option, too, which is from TestFlight. So if you sign up with TestFlight, you can easily find out what device and the person is using by inviting them to your team. All you need to do is send them an invite to their email address. And of course, the user needs to go through the process of signing up the test flights, installing the test site profile on their phone to get the device information. And but for some people, they don't like signing up because it's just too troublesome. So these are the two ways you can get the UDID without having a device with you. So that's the first step. So that was the first step of distribution. So moving on to next is provisioning. When you want to run your application on a real device, you'll need to have a provisioning profile for the device that you're using. And there are two types of provisioning file. Okay? So one is development provisioning, which is for debugging only, debugging purposes. And another one is called the distribution provisioning, and such as ad hoc distribution, uh, app source submission distribution, or enterprise distribution. Normally, you will need to create both of these. If you, if you have done that, normally you need to create both of these for each of the app that you're doing. And it's annoying for de developers like us, because if we have multiple projects, 
that means we need to create multiple of these, multiple of these provision files. And on, on the note, not all the iOS developer programs support distribution. Let's take a look at the table from Apple. So this table explains the differences between the dif different developer programs for iOS. So we have a university program, which is free, standard program, and enterprise program. If you look closely, not only not all the program uh, support ad hoc distribution, only for those who paid. So that means if we have a university account, we can't do distribution? No. Tip number two, development provision is all you need. In fact, you only need to deal with one provisioning file, which is development, until you are ready to publish your app. You will ask, what? This is ridiculous. I've been doing distribution provision for a while. That can't be done. Don't worry. Uh, really, development provision is all you need. Uh, I'll show you later how it, how it works in the demo. Let's move on to the next step. It's generate, generate your applications for your users. And there's only one way to do it, which is via Xcode. So it's under product and archive. And when you finish archiving, a window organizer will show up. And normally you click, you click share to continue building your IPA files. Then you select App Store package. And now you select your distribution provisioning here and click next. You enter the name and click Save, and Xcode will generate .ipa files for you. And normally, you will leave Save for Enterprise Distribution unchecked because you don't have an enterprise account. So this is how we normally generate applications. Tip number three, Enterprise Distribution is for everyone even if you don't have enterprise account. Let's go back one step. In here, we, have, we were given the option of saving for enterprise distribution. And, but normally, we ignore because we don't have the enterprise account. But in fact, you can still do distribution, uh, enterprise, enterprise distribution because uh, there's no because. I'm sorry. <laughs> You just can use it. You can still use it. Let's go ahead and tick the box for the enterprise distribution. And a few text fields will appear, and you are required to enter an application URL with a title. And because enterprise distribution is done via the web, therefore you need to enter the address will be hosting the IPA files. Something like this. And the title is the name of your app. This will show up in an alert pop-up when users try to download your app. So let's go ahead and click Save. Then your desktop will have two files created. And normally, you only have one .ipa file. But with enterprise distribution, you will have an extra plist. But why do we need the extra plist? So th this leads to the next process which is delivery. Now we have the files we need on the desktop. And now we are ready to deliver to the user. For the user to download on the app onto their phone. In this session, I'm going to cover delivery and installation process together, because these two processes work together back to back. So let's go ahead and show you the official instructions to deliver, of delivering and installing the app. Anybody recognize this? Yeah? This is the official WWDC app from Apple in 2010. And the app was not distributed via the App Store like this year. Yeah. So how did we get the app onto our phone? Here's the instructions. 
Apple hosted their app on their server for us to download. And once we have downloaded the app, we need to drag it to iTunes and sync the app via iTunes. But there's a problem. What if we don't have a computer? We can't use it? So there are two solutions. And these two solutions do not require a computer. It's all done via the air. The first is test flight. They provide great service for tracking users. And the second one is you create your own web distribution, like enterprise distribution, and you can host it securely on a web server of your own. Before we go into details, tip number four. Test flight gives you long-lasting love. I'll explain why. So test flight allows you to have group selections. If you, have, you, you can group your beta testers. For example, if I create an app for university, I want students to test it. So I have a group of students who have different devices and stuff. If I have another app for marking, I want academic to test it. So I can have different groups. So I can have distribute to different groups based on what app I'm doing. Second is build notification. Once you upload a build to TestFlight, TestFlight will automatically send email to your beta testers about the new version and what's in the new version. You don't really have to send emails to each individual yourself, so that's pretty good. The third one is all-in-one. You'll be able to download the apps that is associated with your TestFlight account all in one place. Let's give you a screenshot of what it looks like. So if I go to testflightapp.com, this is what it looks like on my phone. It shows me all the apps I can download associated with my TestFlight account. If you click one of them, you can install it from there. So that was all in one. It's really easy. And it's also easy to keep track. TestFly keeps track of your beta users, sorry, beta testers status. For example, what device they are using, what version they are running, and what are their status of the current build. Let's give you an example of what it looks like. This is what it looks like if you send me a new build, send a new build to your beta testers. So if you look closely, on Tony Wang, me, you'll see he's currently running iOS 5 and has already installed the app onto their phone. So that's pretty handy. If you check out Jimmy's status, he just clicked the link. That means he's probably downloading the app right now onto his phone. Or he clicked cancel. So that was test by keeping track of your beta testers. So next is extra features. TestFly recently released SDKs, their own SDKs, provide extra features such as checkpoints, crash log, and you can also do an in-app update. So if you, people can just go to your app and an alert will show up saying, hey, you have a new build now, go ahead and download it. And there's also in-app feedback. You can send feedback straight away from your phone. So that's pretty good, but you have to implement with their SDKs. And they also keeps a record of all the builds history. So that was the first delivery, delivery method. So I have to say TestFlight is, has done a great job here. So let's take a look at the second one, DIY web distribution. Tip number five, web distribution is your one hit wonder. Web distribution is mainly for enterprise account, for in-house distribution only. But even though we don't have enterprise account, we can still use it if, with university account or standard developer account. So all you need to do is create a web page with a couple of links. So you're good to go. So what are the features for web distribution? It's highly secured. You know when you are hosting the file, you know who you are, you are giving the access to. If you are working on a super secret project and you want to keep the things down low, 
this is your solution. And it's highly customizable. Web distribution is pretty much done via the web. So you can add anything, add any information to the web page, anything such as web uh, versions, last update, anything you want. Let me show you how it works. So these are the two links inside the web page. First one is to download your provisioning files, and the second one is to install your app. So all you need to do is replace those blue links, then you are good to go. Very simple. The P list links to your app. Okay. So remember we have two files created on our desktop. Now we need to grab your development provisioning and put all three together and upload to a web server. This is what your web page looks like on the phone, very simple with two links. If you want to put in more effort, you can also add an app icon, app name, last update or version things. So that was customizable. And the third one is super easy to share to a new users. Let's say you have one amazing app and ready for a sales pitch. You would like your boss to have one of them on the phone. But in test flight, you have to invite your boss to your team and they need to sign up for test flight and do the UDID process. And you are thinking, inviting them to test flight and going back to Xcode, generate a new ap application files follow with the new provisioning file. This is just taking too much time. Guess what? One day later, another boss wants it. That means I have to do this all over again. You could say, if I was you, I will wait one more day to take to get two bosses at the same time. Problem solved. No. Well, too bad. You probably get fired by then. <laughs> so we don't want that to happen. So for web distribution, it's super easy and super fast to add a new user. All you need to do is update the provisioning file and upload to your web server, and you are good to go. Two-minute job. Let me show you how it works. So all you need is get the update version of your mobile provisioning, mobile provisioning file and upload to your web server. That's it. So now your two bosses will be able to download your app from their phone and they'll be happy with your work. You'll probably get a pay rise too. So these are the two ways you can delivery, you can deliver uh, your app to your users and say no more to syncing with computers and we are doing it all over the air. As you can see, test flight and DIY distribution, they have their own advantage and based on analysis. Test flight is great for beta testers in the long run. So you have a great relationship with your beta testers. That's why I meant long-lasting love with the test flight. And they provide you with really good features. On the other side, DIY distribution is great for if you are only deploying onto one de uh, device once, especially showing off your demo to your boss. That's why I call it one hit wonder. And this, it, this happens quite often at QT. So that was the final tip. So this is the entire, we just went through the entire process of distribution. So what I'm going to do is show you how it's actually done over the air. So we need an iPad 2. Anyone want to volunteer? Yeah? Yes, but uh, that was for, for backup. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll come grab it. One second.
，来来来，招鬼招鬼。Thank you, thank you. So I'm gonna do the easy way. I have the device with me. I know what to do. Connect via Xcode. Sorry? Restore. Cool. So what I need to do, double click, Command C, done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my develop program. Just a sec, my computer's burning hot, 90 degrees. Cool. So now I have this. This is uh, Queensland University of Technology under Information System Disciplines uh, University account. As you can see, oh, let me add one device first. So this is, this is the program we use for, for our course. So I'm just going to add a new device. Paste. Submit. So now I've added the things, the device. Now I need to update my development profile. As you can see, I do not have a distribution profile. Okay? So I'm going to show you how it works with only default development. So I'm just going to go ahead and edit this provision file. And devil demo, submit. Refresh. And click download. Cool. So now I have a provision file in my download folder. So I'm hosting my app and the things on my Dropbox. So I'm just going to open my Dropbox folder and drag this in and replace it. Just going to wait for Dropbox to finish loading. All good. So now I'm going to swap switch to iPad mirroring. So this is a freshly built, I mean this is fresh iPad, I never touch it. The boss has it. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my website. Sorry, just going to add a new one. And go to j.mp. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> and go. So that's where I'll be hosting my files, as you can see. So now all I need to do is click the first link, open, and you'll prompt me to install a provision profile. And this is a development profile, just so you know. Install, done. So let's go back to Safari, and now I'm going to install the app that I made beautifully. So the alert box shows up. This is where the plist comes in. And click install. As you can see, now it's all done. So the boss will have a new app on his phone after two minutes. Very simple. Uh, just to show you, yeah, it's all good. Uh, doesn't matter. So yeah, so that's how you actually work. So we, we have done this with uh, user studies as well. P student just rock up to us, and we want them to test our app, and we just do this. And it's very simple, and it's very fast on their phone. They don't even need to sign up for test flight. 
we don't need to build the, the, the application files again. And you only need to deal with one provision profile. Cool, so that was the demo. And if any questions, please contact me via Twitter. And I want to thank to AUC. And thank you all for, for being here, being support. And if you have any questions, you can contact me via Twitter or my emails.